Well, you know what? You can tell that Leon's back because we're getting on very smooth, much more smoothly than we did. I heard Friday was Friday. a was a little bit crazy <laughs> getting on. With Joe Rose was here. Leon was a little sick, you know, but Leon gets sick all the time, you know. Well, I heard Le- Jeff Leon's was in charge Friday, so yeah. there was a little bit of problem yeah, Jeff with, was with the queue. Who was well, going Joe on? Was, Joe and I were sitting here talking, and, and, I, and I could see them in the back, and they're going, you <laughs> And I'm going, why? I'm going, why? Are we on? Because we're no, we're not on TV. You know, we can't. Well, they we're were little, probably we talking. We have a monitor here so we yeah. can see if we're on TV. That's we right. got nothing, and they're and they're like going. Don't you? I'm going, well, Joe. What do they want? Are we on or not? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're on for five minutes before we even knew they were on. Oh, that would be yeah, scary but that's what with Joe. When you get Jeff, you know, when Jeff uh, when Jeff produces, mayhem usually ensues. Yes. You know, and not for good, not for good reasons. But that, they're busy back there. That's though. right. Yeah, they they're busy. Yeah, yeah, they're busy back on. there. You know why they're busy back there? Cheerleader competitions on. Well, right they now. were preparing. They had yeah, to unfog you know, the the cameras. Well, they, and, you know, and they had you know, they're, they're, in, they're in the final round. They're yeah. coming to the finals of the cheerleading competition. I believe they're doing it next Friday, Leon. Next Friday at the stadium. Is that where they're doing the? Uh, He's got to consult with Jeff. Is that what Hold doing? on one second. Huh? Next Sun- this coming Sunday, at at Hard Rock Stadium. Oh, at Hard Rock Live, at the uh, okay at the Hard Rock Live by the hotel there. All I right, think all so, those yeah. guys are rendering right now, though. That's what's keeping you, you them. Know, you know, I've noticed. I go in there yeah. and watch, and they edit back there. Yeah, they they get a and lot when, of when they're editing uh, the guys yeah. on the field. They blow through it. Yeah, they boom, boom. I know. They're it. editing the cheerleaders. Slow and methodical. Yes. Zooming in, zooming out. Ah, I'm not sure. Let me. What hey, shot they want to hey, take? Yeah. Hey, Logan, come here. What do you think of this one here? What do you think? Should I tighten or should I move Why back? You know. Well, that's just like if you want the rain to go down or up. Yeah, There's a lot of things you gotta you gotta stuff. consider. Speaking of rain going down and going up, uh, the Dolphins uh, back on the practice field today, uh, and they stayed out in the rain. Stayed out in the rain. They and practiced did. out there today. It was one of those. I think Coach Gase actually was looking forward to having one, one OTA practice yeah. like this because it looked like it was going to monsoon, and it did. Yeah. It came down a couple times pretty hard but they wanted to be able to call a game yeah. and call a, call a practice like a game you know in those situations yeah. get to plays where you're still throwing the football and moving it and taking your shots but being conservative and having the guys handle yeah. the football in those conditions well, you're gonna, again look, you're going to play in it remember and, arizona and, last and, year well, you remember arizona and, and look at i think last year during the season i can remember two games where it paid off for the dolphins where you know normally the, the team if, if it was going to rain if it was too hot they'd go inside and Adams kind of bought into that. Hey, you know what? We're, we're, we're in the you know we're in this situation. Right. We're, we're going to play out these uh, unless it's lightning, unless we have to go in. We're staying out. And and and, and you got to say that the the home field advantage with the heat helped him against Pittsburgh. No question there. And they've been practicing out there. And then in the rain against uh, Arizona, uh, against Arizona was a big help there. So I, I I'm all for it. And and I would assume that. Um, that he'll continue to, to to go through the same kind of a of a situation during the regular season when they're out there. Look, I, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in that too. If you're gonna if you're gonna have to play in it, you might as well practice it and get used to it. Yeah, you have to be careful because you don't want anybody, yeah. you know, getting injured because of you know slipping yeah. or moving around on a wet field. But you have to be. Uh, you have to. It's 50-50. You have to be able to be in the elements and compete in yeah. the elements because you're in South Florida. You're going to be in the humidity. You're going to be. You're going to catch rain yeah. at, at either two quarters, three quarters, four quarters yeah. of a football game. So you're going to have to handle those elements and the way the conditions are. Your footing. We've seen it a lot at, at Sun at Sun Life, former yeah. Sun Life Stadium, now Hard Rock Stadium, where guys didn't have the right shoes. Yeah. And you know you've got two practice fields out here. One identically suited like Hard Rock Stadium, like the surface there. So you want to be able to get the right shoes and get the right uh, stuff on that you yeah. can still fulfill your duties and, and your job. So there's a lot of things you can get take care of. And as a play caller, you want to be able to get the things that you would call in a game. Yeah. So they were able to simulate seven-on-seven seven calls, uh, team activity, uh, individual drills, one-on-one uh, fade routes, back shoulder throws, all those things in a game situation with elements coming yep. down. And it seems to be a continuation of what we saw last week uh, where, where the guys that jumped out for you, Charles Harris, uh, again, continues to be a guy that's, uh, that's given the offensive line fits, albeit without pads now. Take that into account and take that into account when things get going here in the, a little, little bit later in the summertime when they, when they get out there. The pads are going to be on and it's, uh, you know, it's going there. <clears throat> and, and then Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker, again, continues to, uh, to, to look like he's taking that next step forward uh, to be the type of, uh, type of receiver that they're expecting and, and wanting him to be this fall. 
I, I like Harris. I, I really like his first step. Yeah. You know, I, I was writing down notes in the first couple of OTA practices. It looked like his feet weren't matching up to where his body was. Mm-hmm. You know, it was almost like he was going fast, but he was over, overstanding, over, himself, yeah, yeah. overstanding himself a little bit and kind of getting out of control. I think the, the speed of what's going on now, he's kind of assimilated his moves to where he needs to be, where he can be effective with his feet and hands matching yeah. and being able to get the edge. So when the pad's on, ultimately, he's going to have to stop the run or at least prove he can do it a little bit because you have to be in there to rush the pass yeah. or you got to be able to stop the run a little bit. And I think your point to Devontae Parker is well taken. The guy has to take the next step. Yep. He has to be able to become that receiver we saw in the second half of 2016. And I, I think his, his growth is... It's one of those maturity things as yeah. well. You know, he looks around and he sees the same guys, and he's the guy now that has to yeah. kind of step up because you saw Jarvis Landry do it in his first two seasons. You saw Kenny Stills with nine touchdown receptions last year kind of step up and be that electrifying player you thought he could be. Yeah. It's his turn. Yep. And I had a chance, a brief moment, to talk to Devontae last week, and there's just a little something different about him. He's a little more confident. A little more outgoing, a little bit more, and, and I tell you what, he's he's looking. I mean, he's looking stout too. I mean, he's, he's he done looks a good job. he looks stronger yes, for me. Absolutely. He looks stronger as a uh, pass receiver. Yeah, you know, like he's receiving the football and he's he's grasping it, putting it away. And if he can make one guy miss, this guy can make plays like Kenny Stills yeah. did last year. So you're hoping that he's able to take those skills and he has them. You know, but be consistent. Don't don't lay it on the ground when you have a third and. 11, yeah. and he's, you know, 13 yards down the field. Make those plays, stay on the field, and then be big in the red yeah. zone. You know, go up and get those 50-50 It's 50 funny, balls. John, that, you know, the more I look and the more I'm reading, the more I'm going around doing stuff as, as we're starting moving closer to the, the beginning of training camp and all that. And, well, you just see differing thoughts. You know, the, the, the feeling around <clears throat> South Florida about this Dolphin football team right now is very enthusiastic, very optimistic, Yet when you start reading things from around the country, uh, not so rosy. N- not so rosy. No, yeah. I mean I'm people talking. Ah, oh, that's a four win team. That's a five win team, and, and, all, and all these things. And, and you wonder, man, maybe I'm, am I, am I not seeing what I'm seeing? But I think it's more the case that the further you are away, the, the less you really get a feel for what's going on here, and the less you get a feel for things that really aren't aren't tangible. Right. You know, you, the, the feelings of this team, what's going on in the meeting rooms, what these guys, the approach that these guys are taking, the rookies and how they've been brought along, uh, the veterans that they've re-signed, uh, free agents that they've re-signed, how much that's meant to them and how much it's spilled over into the locker room. So it's it's, it's funny the two... Uh, the the two the two thoughts on this team from near and far away. You know, it's pretty cool when you you mention the rookies. I got to listen to the rookies speak today. Yep. Asiata, the lineman, uh, the guard, getting cross trained at guard, center, mm-hmm. tackle, kind of moving them all over the place just in case because you can only dress seven guys yep. on game day. So all those guys have to be able to play every position and at a moment's notice. But just the way in listening to him picking up the speed and going up against the Dominican Sioux, although it's without pads, but going up against the speed yeah. of, a, of a front seven that Miami has. And then McMillan came in, the linebacker, the rookie from Ohio State, talking about how he assimilated his speed to the game by doing some drills at Ohio State, but even advancing that. He said, you know, we did a lot of good things. We played against a lot of good teams and a lot of big games, but nothing is the same as I've seen over the past week and a half in terms of every guy you have to cover has that speed, and and you have to be able to position yourself wisely. And then Tankersley on the outside, how he's attaching himself uh, to Maxwell and trying to learn from the veterans on the team, being able to you know to, to position himself not only in the outside but potentially as a slot corner yeah. to be able to cross train and, and do a lot of different things to make those three guys more valuable to this team so they can play more snaps. It's funny, John. Last year we we're talking about this time about man, what's going to happen in the secondary? Now the big concern yeah. is one thing: the slot that 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 slot the uh, slot corner. nickel guy. Yeah, that, that slot corner's got to come and play in the nickel package. Uh, and, and work on the insides guy. That, that's the that's the one. That's really the one position you look at defensively right now and say, man, maybe maybe that's 
you know, we, we got to find somebody for that. Bobby McCain right now is a guy that fits right. in there. But, uh, you know, Michael Thomas will get, will get some some work there. But they're probably still, I'm sure they're still looking for somebody that can really lock that position well, I think, down. I think Bobby did a good job yeah. last year, and I think he's going to do a good job this year. But you, you get one nick at that position, it affects the entire secondary. Yeah. So now you have to move Michael Thomas down, who's playing a lot of special teams, is doing a lot for this defense, and could be backing up at one of those safety spots. So you have to... You have to be able to train somebody else yeah. that can give you 15 to 25 snaps because that defense is going to be called upon probably 70 to 75% of the snaps on defense. You're not going to see three defensive linebackers yeah. in the game a lot. So that nickel corner, that slot corner, is going to be in the football game. So whether it's Bobby McCain, it's a little bit of Michael Thomas, maybe it's uh, Tankersley, maybe it's somebody else that yeah. emerges to that position, you're going to have to find a guy that you trust and – Try not to dilute his snaps on special teams as well. Yeah. John, these guys got about two more weeks to go here. They got this, these OTAs, and these OTAs go through Thursday. They go through Thursday this week, and, yes. And then you come back the following <clears throat> week, and then you got mini camp. Right. And after that, everyone heads home. Everybody's you going for about five in, weeks. You come back in late July. Uh, for training camp, and then uh, and then it's it's at it for real. So you know, it, as much as they've got another week to go, you know, time's running out really for some of these guys to 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 pick up as much as they can. And then then they've got that challenge of leaving here, going back home right. for about a month, like you said, five weeks, and a maintaining their conditioning, and b trying to continue to get up to speed when it comes to their playbook and their assignments and the things that they've really got to work on. Well, that's a fine line for me yeah. if I'm a player in my mind, just because you've got all this time now, and what do you do? Do you continue to train, you know, pushing that needle as high yeah. as it'll go, knowing you have training camp coming yeah. up? Or do you blend a little bit of down and R&R time? You know, you don't have to go on trips or go crazy, but you have to recover yeah. a little bit because they've been going at it pretty good. Even though there's no contact, you don't really hit the ground uh, because the rules yeah. say you can't. Uh, those are the things that those guys have to consider, trying to get some rest, get ready for training yeah. camp at the same time, and be ready to go when September rolls yeah, around. They've got to be strong, and they've got to be. Yeah, they got to. They've got to have their. They've got to have their their yeah, chest ready to, to their even, stamina. To, yeah, to, to to go because it's going to be. Uh, because look, John, I, I don't. You know, they've been been around here a long time. I think this. I'm looking for this to be maybe the 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 most um, competitive training camp. That we've seen in a long time. You hope it is. Across the board. You hope it Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Because that's what will make this roster even yep. stronger. You know, you talk about maybe national syndications yep. or national people talking about the NFL when, when the Dolphins come up and maybe don't get a whole lot of respect. Well, I, I think that hits a nerve with, yep. with a lot of these guys, especially, you know, on a coaching staff where you're pushing the needle and you're pushing these guys and you're getting them to to play at their at their best. Yeah. And I think that this roster, as it's designed right now, and I'm sure there'll be a few tweaks yep. as we move closer or even into the preseason, I think you're going to have the most competition at a lot of these positions, especially on the defensive side of the football, yep. and that's where you need it the most. All right, y'all watching us on Periscope. As you always, you can get your questions in. Just go to the message bar, send your questions in, and we'll get to them. We'll get started right now. Black man game. My man in Atlanta, black man game. Heard a report Pouncey could start on PUP. Can you confirm or deny? I, I haven't heard that. You well, know, I sure don't. I don't he, think so. I, I haven't heard anything about that. I know that he is during. He's doing basically nothing <laughs> during these practices. Now, when I say nothing, he's certainly rehabbing. He's certainly doing all the things that he can do. But when it comes to being on the field, uh, he, he's no out nowhere out there. And, he, and look, Adam Gaze said for a long time ago. Look, he's going to baby this guy. He's going to make sure that he's ready to go when the season starts and that you can get 14 to 16 games out of Mike Pouncey. I think everyone knows how important he is, how important that it is for him to be ready. But I, I don't know. I, Black Man Games got his own sources. Well, now. he's got sources. He got his, That's he, all right. He, he got tentacles that reach out there. <laughs> but but I haven't heard anything about Mike Pouncey uh, starting <clears throat> on PUP. So. I haven't either, Bo. And I, and I think that you're right. I think Adam Gates, you're not going to see. He may be a ghost during – you yeah, know, during training, during camp, training too, camp, yeah. during July and, and big parts of August, yeah. he may practice a little bit, but I don't think you're going to see him in many games. Yeah. And if he is, he won't be out there very long. I, I'd be pretty surprised if we see him in uh, uh, week one in, or two in, in padded practices out there. Too. Yeah, I, you know. I just, you know, he's working hard on the side as well as some other guys yeah. that have some nicks. Cole Misi, one yeah. of those guys that are that are working on the side, waiting to be cleared, trying to get to that 26th of July date. Yeah. So you ramp up your your. Um, 
your health, yep. and you try to use it wisely. You don't want to get these guys, as soon as they have the green light, get them, hurt get right them go bat. 100% and get them in all 13 periods of practice. You want to ease these guys in and, and get them ready to play. Don't get them ready to practice. Yep. Uh, Scooby fins up. What's crack a lacking, Big Bo? I'm gonna let you take that one, John. Crack a lacking. You? you know what? Rain. Rain is rain is crack a lacking. Lightning's crack a lacking around here too, and it's man. gonna be all week. So <laughs> yeah. I, I would think the Dolphins, are, you know, may hit the bubble in in one of the next two yeah. or three practices because it was coming down. Yeah, yeah. All weekend, man, it was rain all weekend, Scooby. So no crack a lacking around here. Sound man, ten twenty four. How's the Chapman Denny position battle looking? Well, I haven't been keeping a very close eye on that long snapping battle right now. I know this last year they brought in a kid from San Jose State. Yeah. I don't think John Denny did I don't think he snapped the ball for the first week or ten days of training camp. Then they let the guy from San Jose State He's go. Gone. And then John Denny he did took the over rest. from so there. If I was gonna if I was gonna be a betting man and I was gonna make a wager on Chapman or Denny. My money would be very strongly pushed over to the John Denny camp. I think I've got all my chips. Yeah, on, John on the Denny. John Denny side right now. The yes. only thing that John Denny has to worry about is that he that he doesn't um, he doesn't minimum salary himself out of the league because the guy I think he's been in the league for twelve or fourteen years. Uh, Thirteen. And, and, this will be his fourteenth season. Basically, basically, he's been a minimum wage guy. But when you get to twelve, thirteen, fourteen, minimum years, wage is minimum pretty wage good. Is pretty good money. You yeah, know? it is. And so usually those guys minimum wage their way. It usually out of, has a one point something on yeah, it. Well, yes. I think he may be he may be in the two position. He may right be now. close. He may be uh, he may be at the twos right now. Uh, at uh, Mills Jerry eighty eight, Bo John, very intrigued at the linebacker position. Have we done enough there? Um, you, you know, John, to me, you know the guy, the guy that's out there that could be the difference between being enough. And being just a little short is Koamisi. Yeah, I know. I mean, he's like, look, if Koamisi comes back healthy and can go out and play 16 games without a year, th- that gives you, that really gives you some nice, nice depth out right. there because Neville Hewitt's coming back. Mike Hall has been out there working with him, and they've got Mike good Hall in their Good special teamer. Good special teams guy. Both those guys, right. good special teams guys that can step in. And the thing about Mike Hall is a guy that you know he's going to be where he needs to be when, when the ball is snapped. So, I think they're in pretty good position, but I think if Koa comes back and he's 100% healthy and ready to go and can play the run, I think that really emboldens this linebacker group. Well, it gives them another starter yep. that may not have to play a whole bunch. Right. Well, you it know, gives you another guy to add to the it rotation. It gives you another guy to add to the rotation yep. because you're going to have McMillan, the rookie. I think he's going to you know get some significant yeah, so. playing time. But you've got Timmons, who's a guy that's missed two games in, what, 12 years? Yep. Uh, this is a guy that's going to play a lot of snaps as well as Kiko. He's yep. going to do the same thing these guys play a lot of snaps and they're versatile yep. so you can play any position so i think that if you have a healthy koamisi it's one of those things that gives you the flexibility to keep guys like mike hall strictly on special yep. teams and he could pinch hit for 10 20 plays if he needed to in certain games like he did at the end of the year last year yeah and scooby fins up i'm getting uh, i'm getting the old uh you know, the clothes I wear. Bo got that spring picnic tablecloth shirt on. I like it, Bo. I like this I shirt. Like, yeah. Is that the first one you, you no, I got looked at? Like no, this. I mean, today in the in the closet when you were perusing. No, I actually searched for this Did you this search one. that one? I was walking out. I was wearing something else. I was like, where's that, where's that green sure. shirt with the checkers that I got? That looks like so it. good on me. It looks great oh, on, look you. on you. Like, you know, this is actually a fishing shirt. I was just going to say, it looks like you were going to And I hate fish. Yeah, you're a big fisher. Hey, fishy. <laughs> but I like their shirts. The shirts are comfortable. Those are nice. They're nice. You can play the part, though, right? Oh, yeah. I can act like I can fish. Wear those windbreakers with all the pockets. Yeah, man. I put a bandana around my neck. Yeah. Put the little... Cold th- towel. Put the little thing on my glasses oh, yeah, so you can hang bang them down. down. Yeah, yeah. yeah Put the big floppy hat Koozie. on. Koozie with yeah. a beer. You're right in there. Yeah. And then I... And then, and then, then you I'm, go play golf. Then I'll catch a goddamn <laughs> fish. <laughs> Called fishing uh, for a reason. Oh, where are we at here? Uh, McLe- McLovin, hey, John, what type of mega hold do you oh. use to hold up in the rain? Mega hold four. Mega hold I four? I got mega hold four. I got that from Jim Stuckey out of Keowa Island, <laughs> South Carolina. <laughs> that's not that's not Axe mega hold four. No, it's just it? a regular mega hold mega four. four. <laughs> Wind wasn't up today. Uh, I go to Axe in the fall. I used to worry about that, and now I just started cutting it off. <laughs> I, I keep I saying do the I, same thing. I, got, I, I, I tried to get an appointment to go get my hair cut tomorrow. I couldn't get it till next week, and, and so uh, and, and next week becomes my next. Hey, 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 boss! Is it time to let it go now? Is it time? No, to, I don't, time I, to go bald. I, I, I like it, Bo. Nice and tight know. when you're fishing. Tight. It's, I got nothing left up there. Just <laughs> have a lot of hair, man. That sucks. It um, is the worst. It is horrible, man. 
at uh, T Baby Beats. I think the defense can be elite. Do you agree? Well, it's funny, you know, this is a defense that was pretty ridiculed last year and, and after the season and really not given a lot of respect based on the stats uh, that they put up. But again, I go back to this, the, the most important stat, 10 wins right. uh, for the season. That, that's kind of what you go and by. And points allowed, and, and right? And points allowed. Certainly points allowed from the defense. But I don't know if this defense can be elite, but John, it's hard to imagine this defense not being much better than it was last year. If last year we were at 28, 30, and, you know, in the run and, and pass, those kind of things, I think it's pretty safe to think that this team could be in the middle of the road. 15, 12, <clears throat> maybe somewhere around there, and, and who knows what happens. There's not too many teams, Bo, that can win 10 football games and have your run defense and pass defense rank in the 29th, 30th, right. 31st in the league and, and be able to consistently challenge for the playoffs. So this is a team now, in my opinion, if they get to 18, if they can get to 16 yep. or 14 yep. in one of those two categories. Yep. The other one could be in the, in the high 20s, 21, 22, 18, yep. you know, high teens. But if they can get somewhere 12 to 14 to 15 in either run defense yep. or pass defense – that helps out both special teams yep. and it helps out your offense. So, yeah, and, no and you can get those close games again. You know, remember those one score games the Miami Dolphins continually won yep. in 2016. Those two factors can lead to eight, nine, 10, 11 wins. Look, if they can get if they can get statistically up to there, and if they can close the number when it comes to points scored against, right. um, and Make the big plays that they made. Now, you you can't take interceptions. You for, can't take yeah, big plays. Touchdown. Four four interceptions in San Diego in the yeah. fourth quarter against Philip Rivers. Uh, some of the other big plays that they kick made return, that, punt kick, return. Yeah. You know that all those things factor in the the eighty yard shot over the top yep. to somebody that takes an offensive possession yep. off the board. Those things all have to be factored in. Yep. Uh, at defense sixty nine, Bo, do you think Coach Gaze owes a uh, owes a jai an apology for benching him last Absolutely season? Absolutely not. I would say that a jai owes him a big thank you yeah. for doing that because I think that move in, in Seattle, leaving him here, not taking him the trip, I think that was a, I think that was a wake up call for Jay Jai that hey look you know what he took it personal he, he, and he should take he it should personal have. yeah you know absolutely what? and I don't blame Adam Gaze if the guy's moping around because can you, you're not making can he help starter. me win today no yeah. so he left him at home leave him home and, right. and look what happened what did a Jai do how did a, you know coach, a lot of times coaching is about how can I get a response from a player. How can I get the right response from a player? If you look at that move, if you look at the move from Byron Maxwell, that those are two moves that guys came back and elevated their game right. after the coach made those calls. I think they were excellent moves to make. Both moves <laughs> actually prodded those players yeah. into playing at a at a different level than they had either practiced. You throw Juwan James in you there. You throw him in there too. You know, too. you're not yeah. good enough right now. Yeah. And he challenged those guys. That's what a good coach <laughs> does. He knows he's not going to treat everybody the same. I, anybody that has ever played professional yeah. sports, college sports, whatever it is, high school sports. You're not going to treat every player the same no. because every player is different and every player has different buttons that they need pushed to get the best out of them. So some of the real good coaches around in any sport know those tendencies and they know when to go to press the button yeah. and they know when to take the reins and pull back. What's well, funny, I've heard Coach Shula talk at times and he talks about how, look, there are certain guys that you know – <clears throat> Do you need to chew it? You need to chew their ass a little bit. Right. And other guys, you need to pat them on the back. You just need to know which guys and what they respond to. Right. Certain guys, if they're guys that don't like to be yelled at, and you and you go, you come hard at them. They kind of go shut into down. a shell, and, that, and that's it. And you don't. That's the last thing you want to do. So. Uh, at Andy uh, L007, did Grant field a punt in the rain today? They're also using uh, Kenyon Drake. Yeah, a uh, little back bit. There. They're Absolutely. kind of feeding him, giving him the opportunities. Drew Morgan was back yeah. there catching punts a little bit. So uh, a little bit of everybody. Deal, I, would, I would guess the deal was certainly with Kenyon Drake. Uh, because, look, I, I don't think there's any question in, 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 in anybody's mind that Grant making this team or not making this team is all about how well he catches punts. Darren Rizzi spoke to the media today, and he was talking about Grant and about his determination in the offseason, being able to take Matt Darr and, yep. and go to Texas and catch punts and, and try to perfect that, which is an imperfect science, yep. especially on a day like today with the rain coming down and a little bit of wind. Yep. But he did a great job. He's done a great job so far. Has he caught every punt? No. But he's vastly improved. You, you'll see him – take a punt with one football already in his right yeah. arm 
catch it with his left and start to run yeah. or take two and try to basket catch it. He's done a lot of that this OTA season, and he's gotten a lot more yeah. proficient at, at catching punts at cleanly and being able to use that speed because if you don't catch it the first time, we've got problems. Yeah, well, the positive thing about him is he understands that. He knows the need. Yes. He knows what he needs to do. You like when a guy understands what he needs to do, goes out and does it and, and get the work done because if he can't do it this year – during there's not a roster camp. spot for it, There's him. not a roster spot, but it's also for, not for lack of trying. No, right. It's not because the guy just, oh, yeah, don't worry, I'll be better this year. He could year. have taken two months <laughs> off yes. and not even gone and, and worked at it the, as right. hard as he did. Yep. So, yeah, I give him a lot of credit for that. Uh, at uh, Kaleska, uh, hey, guys, do you think uh, you think five years, 60 mil with 40 million up front makes Jarvis sign? Is that a team-friendly deal? I don't know, but I'd take that deal. Yeah, where can I sign? I'd take that deal in a minute, right now. Absolutely. You, I mean, you give me five years and $10 i I'd take it right now. We wouldn't be very good <laughs> negotiators for ourselves right now. Because you know what? I want to do the right thing. Why don't yeah. you guys just cut it another five, and I'll be happy. Well, you know what always gets me? Like, like, like you, you take some of these guys that, that you know, uh, we'll give you five years and uh, $58 million. No. I need gotta 60. It's got to be 60. I need six. Oh, that two million dollars. That status. <laughs> yeah. That status. I, I don't know what the number is for Jarvis. And, you know, I, I really don't pay much attention to contracts that other people sign. But you know, he, he's got to be in the ballpark of the guys that, that are his <laughs> right. a, a, at his level. And and he's look. He may not be the top five receivers in the but national football league. But he's in the top league, ten. But he's in the top ten, and and he needs to be paid that way. But I, I also think part of this contract negotiation with Jarvis is. They, they, they need Jarvis to do some things. They need Jarvis to clean his game up a little That's bit right. because as well as he plays, as much of a spark plug as he is for this football team, he's got some shortcomings that he needs to work on. Route running, some different things. You know, much as we talk about defensive players being disciplined, not running around blocks, not doing things, well, he's got to be disciplined on his route running because <clears> – <throat> Too many times you see two receivers in the same zone, all those types of situations that, that happen. So he's he's got Well, he has to be disciplined after the whistle, too, yes. in my opinion. You know, he has to make better decisions <clears throat> well, for his team. Yeah. And, and and not take away the spark that he adds to the football team, but don't make him march back 15 yards every mm-hmm. time there's a questionable hit or a call. Um, you know, on the edge of the, of the end zone or the yeah. sideline or, or making that extra hit. He, he adds a lot to this football team. There's not another guy like him yep. on this wide receiving core. And that's why he's going to be the highest paid guy yep. at that position or one of them in the National Football League. But you you got to make better decisions that don't hurt your team at bad times during football games. And, and I think a lot of this may have to do with, hey, Jarvis, just show us that you're cleaning things up a little bit. And, and you'll be rewarded for it. Uh, and a man called James. Finns are getting zero respect from the national media. So what? Talked about it a little earlier. And, and, yeah, you don't worry about it. But you just, you just you know, you kind of wonder why guys like that don't kind of call over here and talk to some people, you know, to get a feel for what's going on. I understand it. You're, you're <clears> in Arizona. You're in New York. Right. You're in Chicago. You're not down here every day looking at what these but guys I, do. I think that adds to what Adam <clears throat> Gase is trying to build here. He's telling these guys, no one thinks you're worth yeah, anything. Exactly. You guys yeah. got lucky to win 10 games. You played a bad schedule. You beat one team with a winning record. Yeah. This all adds to the show. Go prove it to them. Yeah. Go prove it to them again. Make sure it's not a fluke. Make sure this is something that happens regularly, season in and season out. So I, I think this helps bolster what he's trying to spoon feed to the, these players. Uh, at Master Nova, uh, how's Worms are looking? I don't know. I'm not even looking at there, no defensive pads. tackles. Um, I'm not even looking we at could say We could tell you that Harris has a great first step yeah, and he's got good it. speed. But Wormsley, the t- t- interior guys have no yeah, pads on, I, so it's very tough. I can't tell you like, what, uh, what Harris is going to be like when someone sticks that big – Sticks that big paw in his chest I know and it. tries to shock him down a little bit. I there. will tell you one thing. William Hayes, yeah. he's a good run stuffer. We've seen him play for the Rams. Yeah. This guy's quick off the ball, yeah. too. So that's that's one thing you've noticed over the last couple of practices. At Odyssey, Odyssey Artists, some NFL analysts do not have a Jai projected as a top 10 running back next year. Your thoughts? Well, look, I think Jay's got to have another type of – he's got to be another 1,000-yard rusher. You, you know, he Jay, uh, Jay came out from nowhere. He, he 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 barely played his rookie year. Had some injuries. Last five games started showing a spark. Last year he finally gets to start after the Seattle game, and and and, and comes up and rushes for a thousand yards. But he had three two hundred yard games. I know. You know, and that that's six hundred. He was pretty of, special. Six hundred of, of those, the of yards. Those, those right. yards. So you know, I, I think if you're a national guy and you're looking at him, I don't see why you, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't put him in a top ten guy until I see him do it again. This year, but look, and you got 
You, you look, you, you got uh, Marshawn Lynch coming back in here, and Adrian Peterson's got That's himself right. a new home, and he's going to have some new life. So you, you got Ezekiel Elliott coming back. I do think I do think his name gets mentioned when they start talking about the Miami Dolphins. Yes, you know oh, yeah, when yeah. they start talking about the Miami Dolphins, they may start with Sue or Tannehill or Wake, but but, but when they go back, behind. he's not far behind because at least he opened the eyes to the national media and, and NFL fans all yep. over the country because of those three games. And, and let's not look. They put him in the the they put him in the uh, the top 100 uh, right. in, in the league. So he's he's getting some respect out there. Um, at uh, AL over 714 ball, I'm hearing a lot of great things about the wide receiver group. Which underdog wide receiver do you like? Um, Drew Morgan. Drew Morgan's a pretty good name. Is that 81? That's 81. Yeah. I, and also, you know, there, there's actually Malcolm Lewis and Rashad Scott. Yeah. Keep an eye on the two UM guys because they do things that that coaches like. Yeah. They 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 do things that coaches like, and they can make plays without having the football. Yeah. They run crisp routes. They do a lot of good things, and and throw Carew in there too because he's a guy that has yep. to raise his level. We yep. talk about Devontae but, Parker, but Carew's, You know the Carew, Those those guys you talked about. They're all challenging they're, each they're, other. They're in a dogfight for yeah. that spot. I mean, it's and, and it's. That, that thing's going to come down to the wire. It'll be interesting to see uh, what goes on there. El Chapo Jr., oh, what do you Chapo. guys think about Hank Williams Jr. coming back to Monday Night Football? I always like Hank Williams Jr. I always liked him at the start of, the, uh, start of those Monday Night Football games. Well, I tell you what I would like for Monday Night Football. How about some good goddamn games? How about that? How about some games that you want to watch? <laughs> that would be nice. You know what? They, are, they have been some oh, bad games. Oh, there have been games. some dogs out there, man. Some bad. Horrible. We thought Thursday was bad. Woo. At uh, SM Shepherd 777, what do the other DTs look like behind Phillips and Sue? They look like DTs that aren't wearing pads. It's tough. That aren't hitting anybody. It's, it's hard to say. It's hard, it's it hard really to is. say. Offensive line, defensive line, it's it's hard to, to – probably offensive line, but you can you can kind of get a feel well, for the offensive def- line. The defensive guys – The defensive line. You know, the, the edge rushers – aren't getting touched sometimes yeah, you know, because they have one move. They're just going up the yeah. field and, and going outside. But you can say, I, I thought Asiata, I thought his footwork was a little bit rusty when he came yeah. in. First couple of practices. I don't think he was used to the speed yeah. of – uh, of an Adamican Sue, and, 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 and look, he's got Sue, and he's got he's got he, the big fellow Phillips, Phillips. You know, yeah, both quick guys off yeah. the ball. Both like to anticipate snap counts. So I think that you know his second week was much better than his, his first, first week. But there's been a lot of guys on the offensive line. Uh, Brendel's done a great job. Steen yeah. has gotten in there and done a Urbix. really good job. Urbix, you know, playing multiple positions yeah. in there. So guys are. They're doing a good job, yeah. but you really can't tell yeah. that interior play until you get the pads on. Yeah, you can't. No, no, no. But uh, we'll see. Hey, look, uh, camp's coming up, and and we'll find out. All right, that's going to do it for the program today. A little wet out there today. The Dolphins are back in the practice field tomorrow, back in the practice field Wednesday. And Thursday. And then back Thursday. And then the following week come the, uh, the, uh, comes mini camp. And then that's it. And then it's July, and then uh, we wait for training camp. That's right. All right. Can't wait. Wednesday, back here. We'll see you then. Have a good couple days and take care. Try to stay dry if you're down here in South Florida. If you're somewhere else where it's raining, who cares? (laughs) 